We will now call the business session of the May 4th, 2021 City Council meeting to order at 6 p.m. On March 16th, 2020, the governor suspended various provisions of the Open Meetings Act pursuant to his state of disaster authority. The change was effective March 16th, 2020 until further notice or until the state of disaster declaration expires. In accordance with physical distancing guidelines and while providing as much transparency as possible, this meeting will not be open to the public. This meeting is being broadcast live at WCCC.TV. The audio is also being recorded. The video and audio recordings will be available to the public. According to the governor and attorney general, statutes that may require face-to-face -face interaction between members of the public and public officials are suspended. Provided, however, that the government body offers alternative methods of communications with public officials. This includes public comment on agenda items in an effort to allow for as much public input as possible those who wish to speak or submit the written comments on a listed agenda item were asked to register with the city secretary's office by noon today. Individuals who register to speak on an agenda item must limit their comments to three minutes. On items other than public hearings, speakers will be allotted one three minute presentation, regardless of the number of agenda items the speaker wishes to address. When called to speak, please state your name for the record. Any person making in person, making personal and pertinent or slanderous remarks or who becomes boisterous while addressing the city council shall be removed if directed by the presiding officer. And now please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the agenda is to consider the minutes of the April 20th, 2021 regular council meeting. Are there any corrections? There being no corrections, the minutes stand approved as presented and we have three proclamations tonight. Um, the first is a proclamation proclaiming May 1st, 2021 as the 25th anniversary uh, of Community Healthcare Day, Community Healthcare of Texas Day. And Victoria Jingle, um, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Community Healthcare of Texas is going to be receiving this proclamation remotely. Esmeralda, is she uh, on Zoom with us today? I don't see her on yet. That's fine. <laughs> we'll just make the proclamation um, and uh, she'll be able to see this uh, vir virtually. I, Dylan Meek, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Waco, Texas, do hereby proclaim May 1st, 2021 as the 25th anniversary of Community Healthcare of Texas Day in the city of Waco and urge the people of Waco to join with the city council, city staff, and me in celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Community Healthcare Day of Texas. On March 5th, 2013, Community Healthcare of Texas opened Providence Hospice Place on the campus of the St. Catherine Center. This was the first dedicated inpatient unit in Waco to care for those facing the end of their life journey. Today, Providence Hospice Place is the only inpatient hospice care facility serving the citizens of Waco. The city of Waco takes special notice and acknowledges the compassionate end of life care services Community Healthcare of Texas has provided over the past 25 years to our citizens. On May 1st, 1996, in partnership with Providence Hospital, Community Healthcare of Texas was founded as the largest not-for-profit hospice provider in the state and has pioneered pediatric hospice care as the sole provider of end-of-life care for children in Waco. Since 1996, they have provided care for more than 72,000 patients and their families, including more than 20 million in uninsured care. We commend their service over the past 25 years and commend their role as a pillar of compassionate end of life care services for the citizens of Waco. In testimony whereof, witness my hand in the seal of Waco this fourth day of May, AD 2021. And mayor and council, Ms. Jingle is on the, on the call now. Very good. Ms. Jingle, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And it's such an honor to be able to give this pro uh, proclamation um, oh, thank you. We're so grateful for the opportunity to have been able to serve the Waco community and to provide end of life care to all of the constituents there. So it, it's been an honor and we continue to 
be in Waco and the surrounding areas and, and hope that we will be there for another 25 years. So thank you very much. Thank you for your work, Ms. Jingle. We appreciate you. Thank you. If you'll, nice. if you'll, allow, if you'll allow me, Mayor, I, yes, I really ma want to say a personal thank you to St. Jingle, uh, Miss Jingle for St. Catharines. My, um, it, it, end of life is, is something that when family members have to go through it, um, it's almost impossible to do without support of organizations and staff and places like yours. I say that and I speak personally as my father was a patient in St. Catharines at the end of his life. And that was a hard decision that we made going from at home hospice to in patient hospice. And I appreciate everything and everybody that was associated with St. Catherine. So I, I personally thank you for everything that you do for the family and citizens of this, this city and this area. Thank you. It's always our pleasure. We're, we're here to serve and we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Jingle. Our next proclamation is proclaiming uh, May 9th through the 15th, 2021 as Peace Officers Memorial Week. And we will be uh, giving this proclamation um, to our uh, chief, uh, Dr. Cheryl Victorian, um, who will receive this remotely. I, Dylan Meek, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Waco, Texas, do hereby proclaim May 9th through the 15th, 2021, as Peace Officers Memorial Week in the city of Waco and urge the people of Waco to join with the city council, the city staff, and me in the honoring and acknowledging those officers who, through their courageous deeds, have given their lives during this, their service to the public. Peace officers play a crucial role in protecting our rights and freedoms. And it is with gratitude that we extend our heartfelt appreciation to these men and women. Let us never take for granted their dedication to work unselfishly through the day and night to protect our citizens. In testimony whereof witness my hand and the seal of the city of Waco this fourth day of May, 2021. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much, Mayor. And on behalf of the Waco Police Department and law enforcement agencies across the country, Thank you for acknowledging the ultimate sacrifices of not just our officers that we've lost in the line of duty, but the sacrifice of their families and their loved ones as well. We look forward to the time we'll be able to once again honor these families with a service at the police memorial and ensuring them that we will never forget. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Our next proclamation is a proclamation proclaiming May 2021 as International Code Council's Building Safety Month. And I believe Bobby Horner will be receiving this proclamation remotely as well. Is Bobby on the line, Esmeralda? Yes, sir, he is. Very good. I, Dylan Meek, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Waco, Texas, do hereby proclaim May 2021 as International Code Council's Building Safety Month in the city of Waco and urge the people of Waco to join with city council, city staff and me in recognizing the International Code Council. The mission of the ICC is to provide the codes, tools and resources that members rely on, building safety professionals, building safety professionals turn to and manufacturers and the public trust. This year's theme is prevent, prepare, protect. Building codes save. Encourage all Americans to raise awareness about the importance of safety and resilience in construction, fire prevention, disaster mitigation, and new technologies in the construction industry. Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local code officials. In observing in observance of the Building, Co building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider the commitment to improve building safety and economic investment at home and in the community and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. In testimony whereof witness my hand in the seal of the city of Waco this fourth day of May, 2021. Mr. Horner, thanks for joining us today. 
Thank you, Mayor, uh, Council, City Management uh, for this proclamation. Uh, the International Code Council every year designates May as their building safety month, but as everyone knows, building safety is a day-to-day, year-round concern and process. Uh, I do want to just let you know that the International Code Council that the city has adopted for years now, ever since its inception back in 2000, uh, is truly an international code. Uh, it, besides the United States, we're in the Caribbean, uh, Colombia, Honduras, Mexico, uh, Eastern Europe, and Georgia, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, and the United States also uses the codes for their, their building. So, we have a very strong background for the codes that the city of Waco has adopted. Uh, this has really paid off in the ISO number one rating that the city has, and that is fantastic. Uh, our staff here continues to make sure they have the most up-to-date certifications. Uh, we are gonna be looking at additional training just so we can stay on the cutting edge and, and keep that number one rating, which affects everyone's insurance rates. So. That is, that is uh, really uh, special. Uh, the codes, just real quickly, they, are, they change or updated every three years. And when the city of Waco uh, Development Services Department adopts a code, it is uh, vetted by our building inspection and advisory and appeals board uh, to make sure there are, if there's any amendments that we need to make that fit specifically with Waco, although we very seldom make amendments. But uh, as everyone knows, Waco is on a huge building boom. Uh, COVID didn't slow us down at all as far as the, the construction and development, and that is exciting. And when you're in a state that has the ninth largest economy in the world, you know, that says a lot. And a lot of eyes are focused on Waco. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't see any letdown. So that is, uh, that's really great to see. And just finally, thank you all for each of your service to the city of Waco. And um, we just, uh, I'm very proud. I've been here 19 years at the city and it's been the best job I've ever had. So uh, thank you very much for everything y'all are continuing to do. Thank you, Bobby. We're so thankful for you and your good work um, and the work of your department and that plays this very critical role in keeping us safe uh, as well as uh, ensuring uh, development continues in this community. So thanks for your, your work and we're excited about this proclamation today. You bet, thank you. All right, we will move on to our public hearings. And the first one is 2021-260, which is a um, public hear um, hearing in consideration of an ordinance reestablishing standards of care for city of Waco youth programs. Jonathan Cook from our, our Parks and Rec director will be making a presentation remotely. Thank you, Mayor Meek and Mayor and Council members. This is a public hearing for an ordinance of the City of Waco reestablishing our standards of care for the City of Waco youth programs. Uh, repealing all previous ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing a severability clause and finding and determining that the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public and required by law. Now, under Texas state law, youth programs operated by a municipality are exempt from state child care licensing requirements, providing that the governing body of the municipality annually conducts a public hearing and adopts city ordinance appropriate standards of care for such program. The city of Waco through the Parks and Recreation Department, Cameron Park Zoo, the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum provides youth programs that continue contribute to the overall and well-being of youth and families of the city of Waco. These youth programs are held at the Bledsoe Miller Community Center, the Dewey Community Center, South Waco Community Center, and the Cameron Park Zoo, along with the Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum and other outreach locations of the city of Waco. In order to receive the licensing exemption provided by law, the city must adopt and implement these standards of care for its youth programs. The attached ordinance reestablishes such standards. The director of the Parks and Recreation Department, director of Cameron Park Zoo, director of the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum, all recommend that the city of council uh, do approve the standards of care set forth in this ordinance. 
And with that, uh, many questions. Any questions for staff? We will open a public hearing for comments. Uh, Esmeralda, did anyone register to speak? No, sir. We will close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Move for approval on first reading. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I'll just say I'm really thankful for the good and excellent work that our Parks and Recreation Department does to provide um, a lot of the programming that it does after school programs and our summer camps. Um, so thanks for, for that, Jonathan, and uh, we're thankful um, for uh, where we're headed um, with these programs in the future. Esmeralda, please pull the council. Yes, sir. Holmes? Aye. Palmer? Aye. Porterud? Yes. Fairfield? Yes. Sabido? Yes. Meek? Yes, that motion carries and we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, there are no resolutions uh, that have been pulled from the consent agenda. So it will consist of resolutions 2021-261 um, through 2021-271. Um, is there a motion on the consent agenda? Motion for approval on consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? Please poll the council. Holmes. Aye. Palmer. Aye. Porterud. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Meek. Yes, that motion carries and we'll move on to the ordinances. And the first one we have is ordinance 2021-272. An ordinance amending the project and financing plan for reinvestment zone number one for tax increment financing TIF or TIF zone one to provide TIF funds in an amount not to exceed $65,803 to 8th Street Development LLC to assist with, assist with public improvements, enhanced infrastructure and environmental remediation associated with the repair and renovation of a 2,578 square foot building in 407 South 8th Street, the project being within TIF Zone 1 in Waco, McLennan County, Texas, and authorizing the city manager to execute any documents in connection therewith providing an effective date, providing a savings clause, providing a severability clause, and finding and determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed over the public as required by law. This ordinance was approved by a 3-0 council vote on first reading on April 20th, 2021. Are there any questions for staff? We will open the uh, public hearing for comments. Did anyone register to speak? No, sir. We'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Motion for approval on second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Holmes? Aye. Fairfield? Yes. Sabido? Yes. That motion carries. We'll move on to ordinance 2021-273. In order to providing for the extension of certain boundary limits of the city of Waco, Texas, and the annexation and designation of office industrial flex as the comprehensive plan land use designation and the designation of C2 community commercial district zoning of certain territory described as a 3.0006 acre tract of land situated in the Carlos Ocampo survey, abstract number 32, city of Waco, McLennan County, Texas, being all of a called 2.50 tract of land, tract one, and all of a called 0 0.50 acre tract of land, tract two, both described in the warranty deed with vendor's lien to KFMM LLC, recorded in document number 2010-0034877, official public records in McLennan County, Texas, and being located at the intersection of Texas Central Parkway and Bagby Avenue, and further located within Waco's extraterritorial jurisdiction, which said territory lies adjacent to and adjoins the present boundary limits of the city of Waco, Texas assigning the annexed territory to city council district number three, establishing city of Waco precinct 60, which will consist of the annexed territory, directing that the city precinct district map may be revised to reflect the change and providing voting location at any city of Waco vote center, providing that said territory bears pro rata part of taxes entitling inhabitants to all rights and privileges of citizens and binding inhabitants to acts and laws of city. Adopting a service plan, providing a severability clause, providing for publishing of ordinance, providing penalties therefore, and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. This ordinance was approved by a 6 0 council vote on first reading on April 20th, 2021. Any questions for staff? 
We will open a public hearing for comments. Did anyone register to speak? No, sir. We'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? I'll move for approval on second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Holmes. Aye. Palmer. Aye. Borderoo. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Meek. Yes, that motion carries and we'll move to ordinance 2021-274. An ordinance abandoning a portion of the right of way located at Dutton Avenue between South 4th Street and University Parks Drive described as a 3.574 acre tract located in the Thomas J. Chambers Grant, abstract number seven, McLennan County, Texas, and being all of the existing Dutton Avenue right of way variable width located between South 4th Street and University Parks Drive. Providing a severability clause and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed over the public is required by law. This ordinance was approved by a 4 0 council vote on first reading on April 20th, 2021. Are there any questions for staff? We will open a public hearing for comments. Did anyone register to speak? No, sir. We'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Motion for approval on second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Holmes. Aye. Fairfield. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Meek. Yes. That motion carries and um, we'll move on to um, ordinance 2021-275. An ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, provided that the Code of Ordinances of the City of Waco be amended by revising Section 28-247 and Chapter 28 Zoning of said code. Providing the zoning map shall be changed that certain property described as lots 5, 6, and 7, Block 2, Van Hall Edition, known as 2215 and 2217 Washington Avenue, shall be changed from C2 District Classification and become and be designated to 03 District Classification. Providing for penalties, providing a severability clause, and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed, is open to the public as required by law. This ordinance was approved by a 6-0 council vote on first reading on April 20th, 2021. Are there any questions for staff? We will open a public hearing for comment. Did anyone register to speak? No, sir. We'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Holmes. Aye. Palmer. Aye. Porterroot. Yes. Fairfield. Yes. Sabido. Yes. Meek. Yes, that motion carries. Um, and we will move on to the hearing of vis vis visitors. Are there any registered speakers for the hearing of visitors? Yes, sir. We have two registered. One is uh, submitting comments, Dr. Northcutt, and then we have a speaker with, um, to follow. Very good. Um, Esmeralda, will you start with the submitted comments? Sure, did you want to open the uh, public? Yes, let me open it. We will now open the hearing of visitors. During the hearing of visitors section of the agenda, we provide an opportunity for the public to present concerns or address issues that are not matters for consideration listed on the agenda. Council is unable to conduct discussion, but will listen, ask staff to look into concerns and provide follow-up. When called to speak, please state your name for the record. Each speaker must limit comments to three minutes any person making personal and pertinent or slanderous remarks or who becomes boisterous while addressing the city council shall be removed if directed by the presiding officer. Thank you, Esmeralda. Sure. Um, Mayor and council, we received a comment submitted by Mr. Um, Alan Northcutt. His comment starts with, since early 2018, we have focused on the city's response to the climate crisis in terms of mitigation, primarily the increased use of renewable energy and electrification of transportation. It is commendable that we are beginning to join with other cities around the world in this critical effort. However, we must also consider the other side of the climate crisis coin, that is adaptation. In Waco, there are five major adaptation issues, increasing extreme heat with heat waves, worsening drought, crop failures, more heavy flooding, rainfall events, and increased vector-borne diseases. Regarding increasing temperatures, the projections are for 70 to 80 more days, over 100 Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and 2100. 
If we continue emissions businesses as usual, the heat injury kills more Americans than any other natural disaster. Adaptation will include providing adequate cooling centers for those without access to air conditioning. We currently see many days each year classified at some level of drought. We recall August 2018 in which McLennan County had the highest level of drought in the state, D4, exceptional drought. We expect drought to continue and worsen. Also in 2018, the reports of loss of half of corn and sorghum crops by some farmers as a result of the drought. Crop failures are projected to worsen during the century. Planning will include the provision of adequate water resources for people and crops. Extreme rainfall events have increased approximately 15% since 1960 and may increase further. A FEMA study this year reported that the county is at re relatively high risk of ravine flooding with projected annual losses of 1.5 million. Adaptation may include assessment and improvement of drainage infrastructure. Finally, with increasing temperature, vector-borne diseases such as dengue and West Nile virus may increase. Adaptation may include surveillance, prevention, and treatment of, those, of these disorders. Thus, as we focus on mitigation of the climate crisis, we must also begin to consider adaptation primarily related to heat, drought, crop failure, flooding, and vector-borne diseases. Thank you. And that's the end of his comments, sir. Thank you, Esmeralda. Do we have anyone else who's registered? We do. We have Ephraim Herring. Um, I'm going to move him as a panelist so that he may speak. Mr. Herring, are you on the line? This is his first time um, connecting this way and we've been Mr. Herring? Mr. Herring, are you on the line? This is our last Zoom meeting, guys, hopefully. <laughs> Mr. Herring, are you there? I see he's not on mute any longer. And I can't tell what's going on. Okay. Um, we will, uh, why don't we do this, Esmeralda? Uh, uh, oh, hello, Mr. Herring. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead, Mr. Herring, we can hear you. Man, it looks like we lost you. We lost him, yeah. Oh. Mr. Herring, can you hear us? Hello, Mr. Herring, we can see you. Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, Mr. Herring. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm calling. I'm reference to your, 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 the uh, city of Waco charter. Uh, I came in August 1st of 2017 about the property at 1046 Chestnut. And I went, came to y'all because in section uh, two, of article two of the, of the uh, charter of Waco, y'all do investigations and the problems i have not received any information from your uh, city on the corrections of they're going to do to the property but the errors made by miss public works department when it came out and installed a approach to the alleyway is not in accordance with the adopted city development plan of 2016. So my question is, I informed uh, Bradley Ford back in, ja in July of 2018 that I was going to start an investigation. And so far, I've completed my investigation, but 90% of the people that I've talked to always refer me to your city attorney's office every time I ask a question about this property. So my end, uh, Barrenfield, I buy here uh, in, in 2000 in 2020 uh, with the public works department and the inspection department, which I thought was kind of unprofessional. But I'm trying to understand the job.
Mr. Herring, um, I don't, I don't want to cut you off because we oh, want to give you. We go to do an investigation. Mr. Herring, we're having technical difficulties, and um, so there, there's two things I'd propose. Number one is please feel free to um, contact Ms. Hudson, who um, can um, take down your comments um, and distribute them to council. Um, and so additional, I, a, I guess I need to send each one of y'all my questions by mail. Um, Mr. Herring um, and, and Esmeralda, if you could um, contact Mr. Herring after the meeting and um, let him know since we're having technical difficulties that one, this is hopefully, uh, well, um, I, uh, just to, to um, send uh, his written comments um, into us and then maybe next time we can work to um, ensure that he has a, a better ability to call in. Um, yes, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who's uh, signed up for the hearing of visitors? No, sir. That was the last uh, registered speaker. All right. We'll close the hearing of visitors. Are there any council member reports on committees, boards, or commission liaison visits? If not, are there any requests for future agenda items? Mr. Mayor, just a small matter. Do you think it'd be okay if we met in person next time? <laughs> that is the plan. <laughs> I look forward to it. Um, any other requests for future agenda items? There being no further business, we will adjourn this meeting at 6.32. Everybody have a great evening.